Welcome to my presentation of OpenNOS for Applications, Architecture and Control. This is a new design and implementation of a general purpose reasoning system utilizing the non axiomatic logic. It is a pragmatic design which combines the stable aspects of the NOS theory and has a strong focus on agency. Also, a C implementation exists. The desired capabilities of this system include to reason via non axiomatic logic, to be able to learn from event streams in real time without interruption. Also, it should be able to extract sensory motor contingencies and to use them to plan ahead to reach different outcomes. Also, it should become a core for autonomous systems, including robotics. The underlying principles follow Wang's idea that intelligence is the ability for a system to adapt to its environment while working with insufficient knowledge and resources. So the system has to work with finite resource constraints, it has to work in real time as new information constantly streams in. Also the system has to be open in the sense that existing beliefs can be challenged by new experience. Different cognitive functions of this system are a side effect of the reasoning process. NAS is an inference engine, so it consists of three major components, which is a non axiomatic logic, then a memory structure which exploits compositionality. Th those modular representations it uses we call concepts. Additionally, it has a control strategy which works attention driven by a form of priority based sampling. The non axiomatic logic is very, uh, or doesn't use a, a binary truth value, but instead it uses um, a tuple of frequency and confidence, where frequency is the ratio, it's, it's uh, positive evidence over total evidence, and the confidence is simply the total evidence mapped to a value between 0 and 1. Also, the non axiomatic logic is quite expressible. For instance, you can say that cat is an animal, or other statements with sets like that Sam and Garfield are cats, or that cat are meowing furry things. Also, um, you can express relationships like that animals like food, or eat food in this case. Um, also, temporal relationships can be described like sequences A, B or that A leads to B usually. More can be seen in Wang's book, Non-Axiomatic Logic, a Model of Intelligent Reasoning. The overall architecture we see here, which includes sensory channels, sensory, sensory channel uh, essentially is the idea to, for each modality to map physical signals to Nazis. This can be like a single touch sensor, but it can also include more complex sensors like a camera, where the mapping is realized, for instance, by a confnet based multi object tracker, for instance. So we have those sensory channels which, uh, which take information from different modalities and map them to NACIS to send them to the next block, which is the FIFO sequencer. This one receives different events from the sensory channels. It stores only up to a predefined maximum, where the, it's simply the one which goes in first gets removed first. Um, and it forms sequences of the received events using an internal FIFO array. So for instance, when you have input events A, B, C, the FIFO sequencer can already create a bunch of sequences like the individual events or combinations like AB, BC, AC or ABC. So that's it. So from here we go into the cycling events queue. This is the global attention buffer of the system where all events meet. It stores up to a predefined maximum amount of events again. 
This time it maintains the capacity by removing the lowest priority item to make place for a new item. The items in it are ranked according to their priority value and in each cycle the highest priority event is taken out to be passed on to the concept memory block. So a concept memory, um, here we see the memory structure. So, so statements essentially form concepts, except of implication statements, which are links between concepts, like, like here. And concepts allow for local processing, so they allow to revise evidence, like if door is closed, gets more and more evidence, it will revise it up. Um, also, concepts can do inference with the neighbors. This can happen via a common subterm, like door one in this case, or via implication. Um, so, the implication links can encode a statement like a precondition. It's the precondition, this is the operation, and this leads to the following, co to this consequence. Um, Overall, the concept memory serves um, multiple functions. It should be able to process events to map them to concepts of same term. But it should also be able to summarize event evidence via revision and create new concepts if they do not exist yet. Also, it retrieves beliefs from concepts which are either temporally or semantically related and passes them on for for inferences, we will see. Um, and so essentially both both the temporal and the semantic related beliefs are passed on together with the event we took out from the cycling events queue and they are passed on the semantic inference or sensory motor inference dependent on whether it's a temporal relationship or based on a common subterm. Um, and for semantic inference, because th this one needs the common subterm, there are, for instance, here we see some inference words like uh, if S is a M and M is a P, so we can conclude that S is a P, which is a form of deduction. Here the M is the common term between the premises. And there are also other inference words for abduction and also for inductive conclusions, which are those are our syllogistic inference words. Um, and for the sensory motor inference, there are there are um, there are different responsibilities, like to form implications, so that when event A is observed and event B, and B comes comes after A, and if this pattern is observed, it can infer that A leads to B. And of course, if this pattern is observed more often, it can form by a revision, a stronger relationship that A usually leads to B. Also, prediction is possible. So if this relationship is already established and the new event A is observed, it can predict B. A similar thing can happen with gores. So if there is a gore G and there is a relationship A leads to G, then the system can get used to want A. Also, if the system wants to execute an operation in a certain context and the context is already fulfilled, it can derive and execute the operation. So here, among multiple implication candidates, the system always selects the option for a GOR, which maximizes essentially the frequency and confidence of the, of the operation GOR. And so for the operation core to be executed, it then needs to be above a decision threshold. So for this to happen, the implication needs to have a high growth value, but also the context has to be fulfilled. Um, and here, also if, if, if there is no operation which currently is above decision threshold, it will simply derive the sub course which it will put into cycling events queue, which might in the next step be the, the, be the new G to be processed and to be for the system to find operation to execute to, to realize it. So 
this is the sensory motor inference here. Um, so this is essentially the entire picture. So we we receive information. It goes into the FIFO sequencer to be to be sequenced into into sequences, and uh, it ends up as events in the cycling events queue. Uh, from there, the elements are taken out to form concepts to form um, which are essentially linked by implications and by a subterm relationship. The ones where implication will, um, if it if there's a r relation with with an implication, it can use it for sensory motor inference, and if there's a subterm relationship, it can use the concept for semantic inference. And the results of those inferences go back into the cycling events queue, and this is essentially the entire system. Um, we have used the system in multiple ap applications like for Bong. Here the idea is simply to catch the bar and there you can define a simple metric like hit over hit and misses. In this example the system performs very well and is able to, to is also able to perform similarly well in in similar tasks like inverted pendulum and space invaders. Um, we took it to the next level and tried to have examples which demand relational reasoning. The, the toothbrush example is an example which, has, which comes from relational frame theory. The system should unscrew a screw, but it doesn't have a screwdriver, so it needs to melt a toothbrush and reshape it in order to, to, to perform the task. And this this system now can do this consistently and repeatedly, and it outperforms our previous implementations. Another example is a score, um, where there are different objects and the rooms can be navigated, and we expect the system to be able to to do this, and it should be able to reach different cores in this environment. Also here we can define a metric like the realized cores over the total cores to measure how well the system performs. Another example we have already tested the system with is shape world, where there's a confinite based detector can which just detects different object categories and some additional properties of the object, in this case simple shapes and property whether they are filled or not. And this picture can constantly change, the shapes can move around, and we expect the system to be able to answer arbitrary questions about this scene. And, and here we can also measure the capability by the answered questions over the total one. Thank you, that's essentially it. And if you want to try the system, you can follow this GitHub link. Thank you.